So just continuing on with the questions I was getting about the Lewis structure questions on the practice problems sheet that I put on Moodle. Uh, one of them was uh, this xenon molecule here. And uh, yeah, sort of a bit, a bit of a tricky case, I guess. But like always, we'll, we'll walk through our rules. The first rule <clears throat> is to propose what the bonded network might look like. And, and specifically, we need to think about what the central atom might be. And there's a couple of different things that would cause us to choose, I think, xenon in this case as our central atom. Um, one is that it's written first, and generally, not, not, not always, but usually the, the first the atom that's written is the central atom in a Lewis structure. But also we've got multiple oxygen atoms, multiple fluorine atoms, and it's not always true that, or, or at least would be awkward in this case for one of those to somehow be the central atom and we'd have to string all the other ones around it some way. You know, it's not really as uh, symmetrically nice uh, as, as the option with xenon in the middle. So yeah, xenon being in the middle is probably the obvious choice here. The other, some of the other factors that might come into play here, if we think about fluorine, in all the contexts that we've seen fluorine in this class, it's been bonded once to something. So it's really difficult to imagine fluorine as the central atom. Not that it couldn't be, but uh, that doesn't really sit right with our intuition. Oxygen, we tend to see oxygen bonding one or once or twice. So, you know, we've got seven atoms in this system. Again, a lot of pieces of information pointing us to xenon here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to draw uh, the six bonds around xenon here, and I'm just going to put all my stuff around it. And it really doesn't matter where I put them, um, but just because I like to draw things symmetrically, I'll just put the oxygens opposite one another and the fluorines around like that. So yeah, I think I've got all of my, my atom counts set up pretty good there. So what I would do next is I would think about the number of electrons I've got in my total system. So I've got a xenon atom. Now xenon is low enough in the periodic table that there is Ds there, but what we, what we talked about is when we're counting valence electrons for a Lewis dot structure, we really only consider the highest principal quantum number. So really we only follow along the row that xenon is in, and you ignore the Ds in that row because the Ds in that row are of a lower principal quantum number than the rest or than the row itself. And so xenon, like any noble gas, comes with eight electrons. So it's, uh, it's got eight electrons in its valence. Um, if I look at the fluorines, we've seen fluorine several times. We know that it's the seventh element over in its row. So we've got seven, uh, seven electrons that come with fluorine. And we've got four fluorine atoms. So if we put all that information together, we'll get 28 electrons there coming from, uh, coming from fluorine. From the oxygen, that's one over. So oxygen is going to come with six electrons. And I've got two of them. So six oxygen, or sorry, six electrons times two oxygen atoms gives me 12. And if I add all of that up, I should get 48 electrons. So I've got 48 electrons that I need to put into this diagram. I can just, before I even start doing uh, electron counting, I can just notice that I've got six bonds already written in my diagram. That's at least the minimum amount of information. I need a minimum amount of electrons to bond everything together. So six bonds two electrons in every one of those bonds, that means that my diagram already has 12 electrons in it. So if it's already got 12 electrons in it, that means I've only got 36 more to put in places. And if I keep following my rules where I, I need to go ahead and, and, and put more electrons, do the octets around all the outer atoms, well, I can do that uh, you know, right now. So if I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So there we go right there. So 36 electrons. Um, and that actually means I've got everything all taken into account. I've got no electrons left over. So there's really nothing else in terms of, you know, put any remaining electrons on the central atom. None of that sort of stuff has to go on at this point. Um, if I check for uh, uh, octets, obviously all of my outer atoms have octets. My inner atom has more than an octet. That's okay, as we've seen many times, but I certainly wouldn't want to you know, give it more electrons now. You know, if I had them, I, there's no, really no need to do that, but I don't have them anyway, so that's fine. So when I look at this structure, um, like we always do, we'll think about formal charges at this point. So I want to think about formal charges of all my atoms. 
And how we do that is we think about how many valence electrons did my atom have when it came into the structure, and how many electrons does it have right now? So we want to take the difference between those two numbers. If I take a look at my oxygen atom here, uh, it doesn't matter, they're both exactly the same, so I can just focus on that one. Oxygen, we said, came in with six electrons. So we say oxygen has six valence electrons. If I look in this structure, I see two, four, six, and then one more coming from half of this bond, that means that this oxygen now has seven electrons. So six valence electrons minus seven, as it's written in this diagram, means that that oxygen atom has a minus one formal charge. And by symmetry, so does this other one have a minus one formal charge. So I'm just going to indicate that with a little number minus one next to each of those. If I look at my fluorine atoms, we know that fluorine came into this uh, molecule with seven valence electrons. Right now, it's got two, four, six, plus one in the bond, that's seven. So fluorine's actually balanced. Came in with seven electrons, it's got seven electrons in this diagram. So, uh, and I also know that all my fluorine atoms uh, are exactly the same as every other one. I don't have to do this calculation over and over again. I see zeros, and zeros are good for formal charges. Now xenon is the last thing I need to worry about, um, and as we already pointed out, xenon had eight valence electrons, and if I have a look at what it's got now, we've got one electron from each of the bonds that it has, and so that's six. So it came in with eight minus six that it has right now. That means that its formal charge is plus two. And as we know from class, uh, formal charges of of anything other than zero is not great, but the bigger the number, the worse it is. So I'd look at a plus two and I'd, I'd be a little bit concerned about that. And also I'd look up at my oxygen atoms and see that I've got a plus formal charge here right next to some negative formal charges. It's a bit of a no-no, and when that happens, there's a sort of an easy conceptual change that I could make here, and I could say, well, I won't, I won't harm my octet, on the oxygen atom if I take an electron pair and cause it to be a multiple bond or cause it to, to actually be another, an additional bond between oxygen and whatever atom it's bonded to. And there's no reason I can't do that twice because each of my oxygen atoms is now suffering with a minus one formal charge. If I make the change that I'm indicating on my diagram right here, that would result in a second bond for each case and it would result in the obvious removal of the electron pairs that, uh, that contributed to the bond. So if I do that very carefully here, I'll get something like that. And so now I've got a different structure. I've got uh, obviously one less electron pair on every oxygen atom and one more bond between that ox those oxygen atoms and the central atom. So now I want to actually recalculate my formal charge because I've changed the bonding situation in all of those cases. Oxygen again comes in with six valence electrons. If I now count, I've got two, four, and then one from each of those bonds, that's six. So that's great, I've satisfied oxygen in this case, which means that this other oxygen is also fine because it's exactly like the first one. And if I count on my xenon system now, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bonds, one electron from each of those, that means I've got eight electrons for xenon in this structure. Um, eight electrons came in with it, it's got eight now, that sounds like it's balanced, so xenon would have a zero formal charge in this structure as well. And when everything is zeros, basically you're done, because you, that's effectively the best Lewis structure you can make for this system. And so we can learn all kinds of stuff here, like the bond to oxygen between xenon and oxygen is likely much stronger than the bond to fluorine. All we've done is count electrons to figure that out. The bond to oxygen is also probably shorter. We can tell that because there's six things around this xenon atom, this would be an octahedral structure. And I'm willing to bet that it's probably somewhat exactly like I've drawn it here, where the oxygen, one oxygen would point up, and one would uh, point exactly opposite, 180 degrees away from it. So I'm imagining this would be a trigonal bipyramidal structure with my fluorines, uh, you know, square planar around the middle, and then each oxygen going up and down from that. So we learn all this kind of stuff about this molecule just by counting electrons and uh, putting those into our diagram and then checking formal charges. Uh, and it all works great. So hopefully this was the structure you got, uh, and if not, let me know.